Hi all. In the last video, we learned about typical prokaryotic cells, and we saw that prokaryotic cell structures were almost all elaborations on the outside of the cell. In this video, we'll begin a discussion of eukaryotic cell structures. In this picture, we see a typical animal cell with its various structures on the left, and a plant cell with most of those animal structures, plus a few additional structures in green boxes on the right. From Chapter 3, Video 2, we saw that surface area to volume ratio decreases as the objects get larger, and that this limits the size that prokaryotic cells can achieve. We also saw that eukaryotic cells are tens to hundreds of times bigger than prokaryotic cells. How do eukaryotic cells get so large? Well, all the structures with red M symbols are membrane-bound organelles. An organelle is a cellular component that performs a specialized function. A membrane-bound organelle is an organelle whose outer boundary is made of membrane. Eukaryotic cells contain lots of different types of membrane-bound organelles. These membrane-bound organelles represent internal surface to add to the total surface area of the cell. With lots of internal surface area, the cell can get larger while still providing sufficient resources to serve all areas throughout the volume of the cell. But that logic assumes that all membranes are similar in acting as surface. Let's take a look at membranes. Cellular membranes, that is, all the membranes of the cell, the plasma membrane on the outside of the cell, the nuclear membrane, and the membranes of all the other membrane-bound organelles are made of phospholipids and proteins. Remember from chapter two that phospholipids are made of two nonpolar fatty acid tails that are hydrophobic they're uncharged and don't dissolve in water, and a phosphate head that is charged and does dissolve in water. Phospholipids therefore have a dual nature, part very water soluble and part very water insoluble. If phospholipids are dumped into a bucket, the water molecules become attracted to the, attracted to the charged phosphate heads and push the phospholipids around. The fatty acid tails all get pushed out of the way and this causes the phospholipids to organize into little water-filled balls sitting in the bucket of water. Imagine one of these phospholipid balls. If you ran your hand, or a red circle, on the outs outer surface of the ball, you'd be running your hand over phosphate heads. And if you were able to stick your hand into the ball and you ran your hand, or another red circle, over the inner surface of the ball, you'd be running your hands over phosphate heads as well. Both the outer and inner surfaces of the ball would be phosphate heads. The fatty acid tails of all of those phospholipids would make up the middle portion of the ball material. We call the ball material a phospholipid bilayer because it is formed from two layers of phospholipids. Well, let's look at how this enables the communication of materials within cells. Imagine the cell in this drawing has a protein shown in green, uh, uh, embedded in the membrane of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The phospholipid material around that protein, highlighted in yellow, can pinch off to become a vesicle. That vesicle travels to the Golgi apparatus and melds with the Golgi apparatus, like lava lamp globules meld together. The protein travels along the Golgi membrane like a boat moving through water. Perhaps it gets modified along the way. The Golgi membrane around the protein, highlighted in blue, then breaks off as a vesicle. The vesicle then travels to and melts with the plasma membrane and becomes part of the plasma membrane. Membrane-bound organelles have phospholipid bilayer as their outer boundaries. That phospholipid bilayer is fluid, no matter which membrane-bound organelle we're considering. And that lava lamp-like fluidity allows membranous structures to exchange parts. And that provides communication throughout eukaryotic cells that enables them to attain much larger sizes than the structurally more simple prokaryotic cells. In the next video, we'll examine other molecular transport mecha mechanisms involving the plasma membrane.